Every year at this time, we jump into the middle of a story that's been told for hundreds of years. It's a story of cities decorating their streets and their sidewalks. It's a story of trees and ornaments and fireplaces, of gifts and wrapping paper and ribbons. There's expectation and wonder and hope, a deep hope that drives us back to the beginning of the story. Because it all starts here. It starts in a manger with a baby and an angel and a scared teenage girl in love with a misunderstood young man who thinks she's worth it. It's about a child who will bring light into darkness, joy into despair, revealing a God who will redeem it all. A God who is leaving the glory of heaven to pursue the glory of a cross. A God who is becoming flesh and blood and skin. A God who is loving and offering all people a pathway back into the relationship for which they were created. It's too rich to comprehend and too beautiful to dismiss. This is Christmas. This is the story of stories. And it all starts here. the story of a Christmas tree, but I need to start with another tree first. I saw this other tree only one time, but it's one of the most famous trees in the world. I'd spent a long day doing relief work in a Japanese coastal town called Rikuzen Takata, when a local worker suggested we visit the tree. I'd heard stories about it and assumed I'd see it at some point, but as we approached, I was struck by how ordinary it appeared. It was old for sure, but if the circumstances were any different, I would have not even given it a second look. But the 250-year-old pine tree had given a grieving town and maybe even an entire nation hope. That's because it was the only one of the town's 70,000 pine trees that was left standing after 13-meter high tsunami waves had destroyed the coastline, almost all of the town's buildings, and an estimated 1,700 residents. After so much loss, it was a symbol that those who remained could rebuild. The mayor, who had lost his wife in the tsunami, said, the miracle pine gave us the strength and hope to carry on living. Tragically, however, the tree was declared dead a year later. Salt water had been absorbed by its roots and rotted the tree from the inside out. The symbol of hope had died. And now an artificial tree stands in its place. Have you ever had to cope with the death of your hope? Where the thing that you look to for strength and courage to go on was no longer there. For some people, that may be a spouse or a parent, a grandparent. There's just something about their confidence and strength that reassures you. For other people, it's a dream or a plan or a goal. It motivates you to focus on something that gives you a sense of meaning or satisfaction. For many of us, it's the illusion of control. That's one of the sources of hope that's died over the course of this pandemic. We've been reminded that so much of our lives is not in our hands. For the nation of Israel, the symbol of their hope was their king. As long as he trusted in God and walked in his ways, God had promised to bring blessing through him to the nation. Over time, though, kings went their own way instead, and the people treated the promise of God's blessing like a good luck charm or a get-out-of-jail-free card. We can do the same thing today. God warned repeatedly that he'd cut down their tree. They assumed he was bluffing, but the tree did come crashing to the ground. Jerusalem was toppled by Babylon, the king was carried off into exile, and the temple was destroyed. 
the people felt utterly without hope. And maybe that's how a terrible year like 2020 has left you feeling. Some of you may struggle to find the motivation to carry on. And others may do what they did in Rikuzen Takata. Build an artificial symbol of hope in your life. Let me tell you what God said to a people who were tempted to do just that. It's a Christmas tree promise found in Jeremiah chapter 33, verses 14 to 16. Follow along as I read it for you now. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will dwell securely. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Now, the promise is that God will send a righteous branch. The word branch is capitalized in most English translations because it's referring to the Messiah, the promised Savior. It's a promise of a coming Savior in the line of David who will lead God's people again. Calling someone a branch is strange, right? And it's not even a large, powerful branch. The branch here is said to spring up. It's just a little twig with a leaf or two, a little bit like a baby in a feeding trough. Not very impressive at all. An earlier prophet used, this, used a, a similar image. In Isaiah 11.1, 1, it says, There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. Now, the stump of Jesse is a way of referring to the line of kings that descended from David. That line of kings was like a large, powerful tree that was cut down. There hasn't been a descendant of David sitting on the throne in Jerusalem since 586 BC. The tree was cut down, and all that was left was a stump. And the people were left without hope. A tree stump is a symbol of what could have been. It has no future, no purpose, and it only reminds us of what once was. But God promised that a shoot would spring up from it, a glimmer of hope, a branch from the same stalk, a promise of new life and a new beginning. If it feels like your hope has been cut down over the last year, you need to be reminded that God brings life out of tree stumps. No matter how much of your life feels like it's been cut down, God can rebuild it. He brings life out of tree stumps. But that life is in the branch. In fact, in verse 16, God promises to bring salvation. Salvation through that branch. This is why you can hope. And the name of the branch explains why. It's, it, it lists that name in, in verse 16. It says, the name by which it will be called, the Lord is our righteousness. Now, that's an ironic name. It's ironic because the name of the last king who reigned in Jerusalem back up until 586 BC, his name was Zedekiah. His name means the Lord is righteous. The only problem was Zedekiah wasn't. In fact, he was unrighteous, terrible. <laughs> time and time again, he blew it. He ignored God's word and God's warnings. He chose selfishness over righteousness. And in a sense, his problem is the same as ours. We know that the Lord is righteous, but we're not. That's why the, there are so many trees that have been reduced to stumps in our world today. But the branch God promised isn't called Zedekiah. His name isn't the Lord is righteous. His name is the Lord is our righteousness. He's a savior who's righteous enough for all of us. He came into this world as a baby, just a little shoot from the stump of Jesse. But the Bible says that when we put our faith in him, we receive his righteousness. We can be saved and live secure because he is our righteousness. He's not only the tree that supports us, 
His righteousness is like tinsel in the decorations that cover us. He's the Savior who is righteous enough for all of us. If you're feeling loss or discouragement this Christmas, you're not alone. Others have gone before you and felt the same sense of hopelessness. Don't put your hope in an artificial tree. Don't trust in people or circumstances or your own plans or efforts. God is the one who brings life out of dead tree stumps. That first Christmas just seemed like a glimmer of hope to most people. But like a twig that grows into a tree, the baby would grow and he gives life to the world. Lean into him. Find your hope in him. Maybe your sense of discouragement this year has less to do with COVID-19 than it does with yourself. You feel like you've blown it. You don't know how to move forward. Remind yourself that the branch isn't called Zedekiah. He's not just called the Lord is righteous. His name is the Lord is our righteousness. If you've put your faith in him, he's righteous enough for both of you. Let that fuel your hope and your courage to move forward. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a God of new life, a God of hope. You're a God who helps people to pick up when everything just feels like it's been cut off. Help us to look to you. Help us to trust in you, to believe in your power to rebuild. Help us to put our faith in the branch. That branch grew into a tree, and by faith in him, we can connect as branches to a vine. I pray, Father, that all who hear this message would receive that life-giving power that comes through the branch. And I pray that you would minister at your hope and your comfort as we realize that his righteousness covers us. He's righteous enough for all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope that our time this evening has given you hope. God brings life out of tree stumps and he can help you rebuild too. Find your hope in the branch and lean into the Savior who's righteous enough for all of us. Merry Christmas and God bless.